Industrial Vacuum, manufacturers of high-powered vacuum loaders. Hurricane Vacuums, operation, maintenance, and safety video. Models 755 and 828. Towing your 755 or 828 industrial vacuum. When towing a hurricane, make sure the tow vehicle and hitch assembly are rated for the weight of the trailer. Also, make sure your truck has electric brakes. Always test the brakes and lights before towing. Always tow the unit as close to level as possible. Disconnecting from the tow vehicle. Be sure to set wheel chocks before disconnecting from the tow vehicle. Remove the breakaway switch cable. Remove the light plug. Remove both safety chains. Unlatch the hitch. Using the hydraulic lift legs or manual crank jack, raise the vacuum off of the hitch. Lower the front of the vacuum down and set the rear jack stands. Use dunnage as needed on soft ground or asphalt. Set jack stand pins to the proper level hole to maintain a level setup. Raise the front of the vacuum up until the trailer is level. Pin the front jack stands, selecting the right hole to keep the trailer level. Raise the hydraulic feet to the stowed position. Again, make sure the unit is level before proceeding. Safety. When using a hurricane vacuum, always use safe practices. Always use the e-stop button and have it within the reach of the operator at all times. Never reach inside areas with rotating components, like the coupling guard or inside the engine compartment while the engine is running. Stay clear of all pinch points. Always use the hydraulic safety struts to hold the collection hopper in the raised position. Never raise the collection hopper near overhead power lines. Hearing protection is required. Keep clear of the vacuum inlet and hose end. Getting caught in the hose or inlet could cause severe injury or death. Please refer to the safety section of the operator's manual for complete safety information. Getting to know the hurricane components. The hitch is adjustable and can be moved up and down to ensure level towing. This is the light cord and plug. Be sure that it corresponds with the type of connection on your tow vehicle. This is the breakaway switch assembly. This will apply the brakes to the trailer in the event the hitch were to fail. These are the safety chains. Make sure they're connected to a secure point on the tow vehicle. These are the hydraulic feet used to level the trailer as well as to raise the trailer to connect to the tow vehicle. This is the control panel for the diesel engine. This is the engine oil fill cap and dipstick. This is the oil filter. And back here are the two fuel filters. 
The engine oil drain is located on the bottom of the engine. On the other side of the engine is the auxiliary drive air compressor, hydraulic pump, governor, and block heater plug. These are the hydraulic levers. The one toward the front of the machine controls the hydraulic feet and the lever to the rear of the machine controls the raising and lowering of the collection hopper. This is the air dryer for the compressed air system. Here is the clutch or PTO, four grease fittings and the clutch engagement lever. This is the coupling between the engine and the blower. The black box at the front of the machine contains the battery for the engine. This is the blower or vacuum pump and the vacuum gauge. Here are the blower safety filters. They are monitored for cleanliness by this gauge. In the event that these filters get too dirty for safe operation, this red light will illuminate and the vacuum will stop. This is the hydraulic oil tank. It should be between half and three quarters full. This is the 100 gallon diesel fuel tank. The locking cap can be opened using the proper key on your keychain. The gauge for the fuel tank is on top. This is the vacuum inlet. The vacuum material enters here and spins in a cyclonic rotation. The heavier material falls into the collection cone waiting for discharge while the air and dust go up through the filter bags in the bag house. The air is scrubbed by the filter bags and then passes down through the hopper connection hose, through the two blower safety filters, then through the blower, and is exhausted to atmosphere. This is the external wear plate. This is easily removable and can be rotated 180 degrees for extended life. This is the bag house inspection manhole. It allows for inspection of the filter bags. This is the gravity-weighted dump door, through which vacuumed materials are expelled from the vacuum. On top of the bag house is the butterfly valve indicator. When the valve shows open, the unit should be in the dump mode. When the indicator shows closed, the unit should be in the vacuum mode. This is most commonly used for troubleshooting. This is the impacting cone vibrator. This is controlled by either a ball valve or a switch on the control panel, depending on your model. The vibrator is lubricated by a lightweight oil that goes in this lubricator. This is the bag house air tank, used for cleaning the filter bags. This tank needs to be drained daily using this valve. This is your main air tank. This also must be drained daily. Daily maintenance. Begin your daily maintenance by checking the engine oil. This is your engine air cleaner. It needs to be checked for cleanliness daily. Just remove the cover and inspect the inner and outer filter. Change as needed. Check the blower oil daily. There are two sight glasses on the blower. The oil level should be between half and three quarters of the sight glass. Make sure you check both sight glasses as they indicate oil levels in two separate reservoirs on the blower. Drain all air tanks at the end of each day. Make sure to close the valve when you are finished. Weekly maintenance. Grease all fittings on the articulating lift arms once a week. There are five spots on each side for a total of 10. Grease the clutch or PTO weekly. There are four grease fittings on the clutch. Do not over grease the clutch. Use one pump on a hand operated grease gun. Check the tire pressure and lug nut torque weekly on each wheel. 
specifications are located in your operator's manual. Extended maintenance. Every 200 hours, the air dryer desiccant cartridge needs to be changed. The blower safety filters should be changed every 200 hours. Every 200 hours, change the filter bags. To change the filter bags, safely open the top of the bag house. Remove the blast pipes and set them to the side. Remove the filter cages and set aside to be reused. Remove the filter bags and dispose of them. You can either remove through the top or you can push them down through the bottom and pull them out through the dump chute. To reinstall the filter bags, take the new bags and insert them through the bag opening and snap them securely into place. Once all of the filter bags are installed, reinsert the filter bag cages. Reinstall the blast pipes and mounting hardware. Last, safely close and bolt down the lid of the bag house. Operating the hurricane. Once the vacuum is safely leveled on all four jack stands, connect the vacuum hose to the inlet of the vacuum. Connect the e-stop button to the twist lock cord connector near the inlet of the vacuum as shown. Start the engine and raise the hopper to the desired discharge height. Be sure your lift zone is free and clear of any utilities, power lines, or other obstructions. Never walk under the hopper when it's in the raised position. Pin both of the hydraulic safety struts. Start the engine and build up air pressure to 90 plus PSI. Engage the PTO or clutch. Always make sure this is done at an idle. Turn on the bag house switch, the dump system switch, and the vibrator switch. Then adjust your vacuum and dump times as required. For most materials, we recommend six to eight minutes on the vacuum cycle and 30 seconds on the dump cycle. The vacuum will automatically throttle up to full RPM when in a vacuum cycle. This may take up to 30 seconds to initiate. The vacuum will sequence between vacuum time and dump time automatically. This will continue until either the e-stop button is pressed or the dump system switch on the control panel is turned off. Making sure that the e-stop button is within your reach, begin vacuuming material. Be careful that the container that you are loading does not overfill. Shutting down the vacuum. Turn off the dump system switch and the unit will automatically throttle down. Disengage the PTO or clutch, always to be done at an idle. Turn off the vibrator switch. Leave the bag house switch on for five minutes to clean the filter bags as the engine cools down. After five minutes, turn off the bag house switch. Remove both safety strut pins and restow.
Using the hydraulic lever, lower the hopper to the down position. Be careful not to pinch the hopper connection hose while lowering the hopper. Make sure the hopper hook is fully seated in the cradle as shown. Preparing for travel. Using the front hydraulic jacks, raise the front of the unit and unpin and raise the front jack stands. Lower the front end down until the rear jack stands are loose. And unpin and raise them to the travel position. Next, raise the front of the vacuum back to the level position and connect to the tow vehicle. Make sure the hydraulic jacks are fully raised to the up position. Connect the safety chains. Connect the light cord. Connect the breakaway switch cable. Remove wheel chocks. Always double check the lights and the brakes and tow safely. For questions, comments, or concerns regarding operation of the vacuum, vacuuming different types of material, or service maintenance or troubleshooting, please feel free to contact us at any time.